My name is Bob Gammon, and I have BCM. I'm with my family here. This is my daughter, Kathy. Hi, Kathy Kennedy, and I am a BCM carrier. I have a 24-year-old daughter who will have a 50% chance of being a carrier as well. She has not been tested yet. And then my son, Alex, is 20. Yeah, hi, I'm Alex, and I have BCM also. And on this side, I have my daughter, Margaret. Hi, I'm Margaret Talbert. This is my husband, Ryan, and our son, Jackson, who is four, has BCM. As the head of this clan, uh, I grew up in a family with four sisters and four brothers. So of the five brothers, three of us have BCM. And so, but I am the only one of the three brothers who passed the gene on to daughters. Actually, my brothers and I were misdiagnosed as having atrophy of the optic nerve back in the 40s. It's only recently, in the past couple of years, that I was tested and found out that I do have blue cone monochromism. I did this after Jackson and Alex were uh, identified as potential blue cone BCM folks too. Well, with Alex, we noticed that there was a um, problems with his vision when he was two or three with all the different symptoms, but originally was also misdiagnosed with uh, cone dystrophy, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Until we all learned came together and this. came together and yeah. figured out that everything is related and now mm -hmm. we figured out we're all PCM people. I know for us it was, we were looking, we were told to look for stuff because we knew it was a possibility um, and it took us a while before we noticed it but his pediatrician started noticing at about nine months the nystagmus where the eye was shaking and we didn't see it. <laughs> and then we went back for the 12 month checkup. She's like, guys, it, it's there. <laughs> and we're like, okay, if you say so. <laughs> and so that's when we kind of started the process, met with um, a local doctor in Nashville, ended up connecting with one who Retina worked doctor. with Alex <laughs> when he was a kid too. So, um, and then now do six month visits and learn as we go along as a family. Of course, it was probably harder for me than it is for the grandsons, thank goodness. Because back in my time, not only was I mixed diagnosed, there was no assistance of any kind within the school system uh, to give me any type of help. And uh, I was a senior in high school before I was even aware of vocational rehab, and I was sent through a program at the North Little Rock School of the Blind, and there was tested and then accepted by uh, Bethel College, where I went to college, uh, within four or five months after I finally got some guidance from, from this book we have. And so I went on through college, I ended up getting a master's in education and taught school for 35 years. But throughout that whole period, I did a lot of adjusting and covering up. I would say that I was nearsighted. I never said that I was legally blind, even though I knew I was but I always went by you know, near side and most people did not realize that people with BCM are legally blind until we run into something or trip over something and then they begin to get the picture of it. You know, it's a pretty clear hindrance to learning, not being able to see. Um, but I kind of just took the spirit of my grandpa who just never kind of gave up even though he didn't really have all the, all the help that I get now and it's, you know, it can be tough sometimes, but it's not, not like something you're going to stop you from doing what you got to do. We've learned a lot of advocacy, mm -hmm. starting when he was not old enough to advocate for himself. So advocate in schools and everything else, which helped us get through. And then Alex has done so much more self-advocacy with everything, school and college and friends and everything. No mother wants their child to have any kind of disability. Um, and so many times you look at Jackson and you guys too, and you would have no idea that he even has this. And then there's just those certain moments, those certain things that he'll do, um, and you, you notice it and you realize, wow, I mean, he might not ever be able to drive. I'm Jackson Tolbert. How old are you, Jackson Tolbert? Four. What do you think about those glasses you're wearing? Uh, not good. What's not good? Because I can see without them. You can see without your glasses? Uh -huh. But do they maybe help you see things that are far away a little bit better? No. I can already see it when they blend in my eyes. When you blend in your eyes? Uh-huh. 
What does that mean? Michael, I closed my eyes a little. It's called squinting when you squint. Let me see. Look up at the camera and show me what you do so you can see without your glasses. Yeah? <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> what do you like about school? Mm, sensory table. Sensory table. What do you tell me more about this sensory table? What do you do there? You get to play dinosaurs in the water. Ooh. Do you like dinosaurs? Uh-huh. There's baby dinosaurs in there too. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Do you like to read? I don't know how to read yet. What about write? Can you write? Yes. Tell me about what you know how to write. Um my family and my name, J T T. In words that you tell me to write? That we tell you how to spell? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. How do you spell your name? J-A-C-K-S-O-N. Yeah, yeah. Are you a happy kid? Mm-hmm. What's your favorite thing to do? I do swimming. What do you want to be when you grow up? An artist. Ooh, what kinds of things are you going to do art on? Uh, animals. Are you going to be a painter? Are you going to draw animals or paint animals? I want to paint animals. Oh, cool. Do you ever feel different at school with your glasses? Yeah, because I have to do this and it feels funny because of these parts. Right there around the, around the lens. Yeah? Yeah. Do other kids in your class wear glasses? Miss mm, Butler. She's not a kid. She's my teacher. She wears glasses? Uh-huh. Yeah, what do you think about Grandpa and Alex? Alex doesn't wear glasses. No, he wears contacts. Mm -hmm. What is it that Alex does, even though he has BCM? Alex is a drummer. I'm Alex, and I have BCM, and this is my dad, Charlie. Charlie Kennedy, nice to meet everybody. Think back to the time when we first learned of Alex's learning or his vision deficiencies. Uh, Jackson, our, our nephew, was being tested for something and we didn't know enough about what it was. And uh, I know that through the times in which Alex and I have spent years together doing things, you know, from uh, him playing basketball to playing baseball for me, um, and then watching the vision be a, more of a problem each year, you know, whether we're playing catch with a frisbee, whether we caught, played catch with a football in the front yard. Um, the distance or the light of the day would affect him. So those things became a concern. Um, you know, having had a few surgeries when he was younger and trying to figure out how to strengthen his, his one eye from the other side, the muscles in his eye, so that he would look centered instead of looking off centered. So we weren't sure exactly what it was, but I always felt like there would be some type of a, a laser surgery of some sort that would help the, the, the issue. Um, probably the most exciting part for, for me as a dad was a time which my daughter went away to college, and as Taylor was, um, you know, going to going to school, Alex and I got to spend more time together. So at age 13, he went with me, and we broadcasted uh, college softball games from Florida. And um, you know, he got a little taste of something that he was capable of doing that didn't have to do with skill related to a, a sport of some sort. Um, but uh, as I did play-by-play -play for about eight games now down, down in Florida, and he got to do color commentating. Uh, a year later, he got even better at age 14, gave, it, gave a little more feedback to the conversation. Age 15, he did even better. So over three straight years, we're working together, um, broadcasting college games, and I'm not, I'm not coaching at the time. But when I went back into coaching in, in 2011, Alex became our color commentator with three different main play-by-play -play guys. And, and he kind of kept them straight on the expectation of how the broadcast needs to flow and what to do with it. So. Um, I've been impressed with Alex for all the years that he was able to take his disability, use it as an advantage versus a disadvantage, um, get information when he needed it, advocate for himself, and be able to be someone that could stand on his own two feet, especially when it came to even looking to go away at college and go to the University of Missouri Columbia. Because at one point he done everything he could do to make sure he knew what kind of transportation he was going to need, how he was going to provide for himself. But uh, we couldn't be more than proud of him. And she miss, mentioned the drive-in, which is probably the biggest drawback with what we have is because our whole lives we have to depend on someone else. I mean, I'm 75 years old and it still bothers me that I can't 
drive my wife up, drop her off the door, go park the car, and come back with her. Uh, but that's just something we've lived with. We've, I've always had friends, family that would get me where I need to be. And if it wasn't that time, uh, one job I had, I rode three buses to get from school back home. And those things you just do in your dad with. Keep going. Not being able to drive is really a, a, a big thing because it kind of stops you from being able to do a lot, especially not living in a completely urban area where you don't have public transit to get where you need to go. So it's really it's really difficult to like go get a job somewhere because like, how am I going to get there? Like if it's not like five minutes away, like it's not really, it's, it, it's kind of a lot to expect me to walk like two hours to go to work or something like that. And also just being able to do normal day-to-day -day things like if I need food or something just to like go walk somewhere to get food or you know it's it's, it's a big setback. Another thing is sports. Uh, I never could play we never I could never could play sports but I coached girls basketball and I coached girls softball teams and when I was doing basketball someone had to keep telling me what the score was but I did it you know I, I can do enough of the movement and, and enough, know, enough knowledge about the sports that I can I can do some coaching with that, but as far as playing in the sports, and I, I love basketball and, uh, and, and baseball, but I, football, but I just, I never really was able to do that, but I got my interest served by uh, serving as, as a coach. Well, I'm excited now about the times now and with the, with the advocacy that's going on for BCM because they're, this is not one of the better known uh, eye diseases, and so I'm really excited. Uh, we're looking into the testimony now with gene therapy and stem cell therapies, and uh, I'm hoping that in not too many distant years that it will be especially effective for Jackson and Alice, uh, that they will see great benefits. But I'm I'm ready to be a, in the human test whenever they're ready to do it, uh, and I'm encouraged by the research that's gone on so far and the success they've had with lab lab animals. So I think. The future is very bright for, for, for the next generations and all, and I'm excited about that. Uh, for uh, the families that might be affected, for them to learn how to identify that at the right period of time, and just for the general public to maybe understand that there is a d disease out there that um, where, where someone you know would be legally blind, but for, to help the public understand um, that you know just just because you don't carry a uh, a walking stick, you know, obviously people know that you're blind and, and have to make accommodations, but um, I think it's probably harder for the world to understand something they can't see, right, something they can't understand. So uh, I just am um, encouraged for the future to, to just drive more awareness for people to, to realize that it's out there and for other families to, to step step up and speak out to, to let our voices be heard that it is, it is out there and people are affected and hopefully it can drive change. I just remember an incident I was car sparking uh, here's some of my single days with a woman, and, and, and I said, I don't drive blind because I'm legally blind. How do you feed yourself? <laughs> so, yeah. so that's why we need awareness. That's why we need awareness. See, I feed myself very well. So. I have BCM. That's okay. Bye.